My name is Belinda Briggs and I'm a web designer. Part of what I do is help business owners integrate automation into their websites. Um, I understand how valuable your time is as a business owner and I promise that this talk will help you reclaim some of that precious time. And the reason why I'm talking to you about this today is that um, a lot of clients I work with have many questions about how, how automation can help them out. And we find that when we automation, uh, integrate automation into their websites, it really helps them um, take some of those more tedious business tasks uh, like appointment scheduling and screening inquiries off of their plate so they can focus on their work. So uh, this talk is to dig a little bit more into automation, answer some of those questions, and at the end, I'm going to give you a little challenge to just try out automation in your business, see what you think of it, and then a few more resources on delving further into automation if that's something you decide is going to work for you. Um, I do not offer automation services in my business, but I do think it's really important and um, I'm hoping this will help anyone with questions out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dig into what automation is, why you should automate, what you can automate, and finally how to automate. So you'll leave here with a simple framework for setting up business automations, as well as a challenge to get you out there and set up your first one. So automation will help you run your business more efficiently and professionally. It can level up your business by pulling in clients you might be missing and enabling your customer service to go the extra mile. Okay. So a formal definition of automation is Technology by which a process or procedure is performed with minimal human assistance. And for our purposes, this means taking a business process and using a system to perform that business process. While the definition indicates there will be minimal human assistance, a human is definitely required to set up any automation and to monitor it. So every automation has three important elements, a to-do list, a document, and the calendar. And in its simplest form, an automation can be set up using good old-fashioned paper and pencil. On the other hand of the spectrum, highly specialized software can run more complex automation. So why automate? Well, when we automate our business processes, we are taking ourselves out of the equation. By putting a system in place to manage parts of our business, we make valuable time available to vacation, spend time with our family, or focus on the parts of our business that we're passionate about. One of the greatest benefits of automation is that it can help us be more efficient with our time. Automation can also add a new level of professionalism to your business. We'll use well thought out, crafted messages that have been prepared well before we need them. Have you ever had to send regret? You know, that time you whipped up a quick client response, you know, to an email that came in on your phone only to discover two minutes later that you didn't actually answer their question, or worse, that your response was full of typos. Well, so truthfully, you probably answer the same questions over and over again. I call these your business's greatest hits. With automation, you'll take your greatest hits and really polish them up so you can stop reinventing the wheel, stop forgetting things, and start looking like the true professional you really are. We'll use these well-polished greatest hits to create your automation documentation element, or document element. By automating and removing barriers to execution, like time and effort, you make room to achieve new goals. Goals that will help you go the extra mile for your customers and your business. So what do I mean by extra mile? Well, my extra mile goal was to ask for feedback. Historically, I would finish a project and then quickly pivot to the next project without looking back. Now I hear you. You're reminding me that asking for feedback is a win-win because it shows my customer I care about their experience and it helps me get better what I do. And it opens the door to getting those glowing testimonials. And reading those testimonials is what builds trust with prospective clients. But I'm just a one-person show. I don't have time to ask for feedback, 
Never mind ask clients to share their fabulous experience with me on social media. I'm going to be really honest right now. It was a customer who asked me to automate their feedback process that caused me to have my automation aha moment. Getting client feedback is exactly the kind of business process where automation can shine. So before we move on to what you can automate, let's recap. We can be more efficient with our time when we automate the scheduling of events, activities, and messages. We can appear more professional because we are going to start using our polished greatest hits to answer common inquiries. And finally, we're going to grow and nurture our business by automating those extra touches like asking for feedback that often fall off our busy plate. Now, I bet you're already coming up with ideas of tasks we can automate. So, let's take a minute and brainstorm a list. What are some repetitive tasks that you do that are candidates for automation? Any thoughts? Okay, well, here is my quick list of 10 business activities that could be automated. Okay, we've got initial, initial customer contact that like a welcome email that introduces your business services. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I wanted to give you an idea of 10 quick things that you can actually automate. So the big question is, how do you choose what to automate from this list? Do you go for the quick win with an easy task, or do you go for the big but complex win? If you're thinking about the big win, your time and effort can definitely lead to a big reward, but not always. Sometimes automating a big project before you've really gotten the hang of this automation thing can lead to frustration and ultimately giving up. So I suggest going for the easy win when starting out because nothing breeds success like success. Okay, so now we know what we can automate. Let's get down to business and talk about how to create an automation. This process looks a lot like the game of mousetrap. So let's take a look at that. The trigger to the mousetrap is the player turning the crank. This turns the gears, causing the ore to hit the boot, which then kicks the barrel, which dumps the ball, and so on until the basket falls to trap the mouse at the end. In this same way, we're going to trace our workflow, outlining the triggers and results. We'll also want to consider timing and tools. This makes a lot more sense when we use an example, so let's map out the workflow involved in requesting customer feedback. First, we want to identify the trigger. Who or what causes the workflow to begin, and how do they do it? In the case of feedback, the who is you, and the how is, by delivering the product to the client, you are now signaling that you finished the job and are ready to ask, how was it? Next, we want to identify the result. What do we want to happen after the trigger? In our example, we want to send a document. It could be an email, a note card, or even a form that asks for feedback. Here, we'll lean on our greatest hits to build the document. So if you've asked for feedback in the past, we're going to want to go back and look at that. Now, it can be hard for a customer to just come up with feedback, so you'll want to have a few specific questions and finish with one open-ended is there anything else you'd like to share? The next thing we want to do is determine the timing. When is this thing going to happen? Is it going to happen immediately? Do you drop off the feedback request when you drop off the item? Or do you do it at a set date and time? To do this part well, to request feedback well, or to do any automation well, you really need to consider what is the best fit for both your business and the client. So going back to my smart client who wanted to automate her feedback request, she was a baker and she did a lot of weddings. So the question on requesting feedback was when should we ask for it? Now, if anyone watching has been married, we all know that the month or so leading up to that wedding, maybe even the two months, has been really, really busy for us. and We've been a little distracted at work. Maybe we've let some things slide up our plate. So 
My banker friend thought it would be great to let the honeymoon go by, let the bride enjoy that, or groom enjoy that time, and then send the feedback request when they got back to work. However, knowing from our own wedding experiences how busy you were before and how much slid off your plate, we know that when you get back to work, you're going to be so busy, the last thing you're going to have time for is to fill out a feedback form for the baker. Now let's put ourselves in their honeymoon mode. And we all know those first few days of the honeymoon are super glorious. We're just basking in the glory of being Mrs. or Mr. Whoever and just really loving our new time together and enjoying all that hard wedding planning work we've done. But around day four, some of us surface back up on social media. We find ourselves with a little bit of open time and we're scrolling through our feed, maybe checking back our email. And so we decided that on day four, the bride is still in the full glow of her wedding, loving every moment, remembering everything crisply and clearly, and having a little bit of spare time on our hands now. And so this is the time that we set the trigger to ship off this feedback request. So four days. That was our trick. But the deal here is not only think about what's good for your business, but you really need to think about what's going to work best for Okay. So now, determining the location isn't really relevant when it comes to asking for feedback, but for other automations it will be. And when we're doing a planning an automation, we need to make sure that we've considered everything and have all of our details in order to actually put that automation in place down the line. So if you're planning something that's at a meeting or a location or maybe it's a conference call, Take the time right now to get that information together. So when it's time for us to set it up. We've got everything all in one place. Okay, now it's time to think about what tools we can use to make this automation happen. And we have lots of options. There is manual, what I like to call semi-automatic, and then fully automated. Okay, so let's talk through a few um, in the zone of feedback options. So a manual option is we could send a paper note card. What we're going to write in our note card is going to come from our greatest hits document. And then on our paper calendar, we're going to write a note to ourselves to remind us to mail the paper note card. Super manual, but it gets the job done. Okay, our next option is kind of semi-automatic. It has both a technology um, element, but also a bit of manual to it, because you still have to do the triggering yourself. Okay, so we're going to use email to request the feedback. Again, we're going to go back to our greatest hits document to decide what goes in there, and then we're going to set a reminder on our electronic calendar to send off that email. Another semi-automatic option would be using a Google form instead of just an email. Okay, and then for the fully automatic, so Sato is the tool that I use, and so I would, and this is what we did for the baker as well, we create, created a questionnaire in Dubsado, we had, and that was built off our greatest hits document, and then we actually used a workflow trigger within the system that said four days after the delivery date, send this questionnaire off. And we could actually send a reminder email if we hadn't gotten the questionnaire back to say, hey, if you have a minute, we'd love for us to, for you to review. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm emphasizing the beauty of a fully automated system. These often let you link multiple smaller workflows together so that the completion of one workflow, like sending an invoice, can kick off another workflow like scheduling and later sending a reminder email if the invoice is paid on time. So we're talking about forms in our example, um, but these tools can let you um, automate invoices and reminders and all of those. So I just want to make sure that I'm highlighting why you would bother with the fully automated. So building out a workflow, especially planning out the words you want to say and the tools you want to use can take some time. This is deep thought stuff. So you want to dedicate a consecutive um, group of hours or maybe even a day or two to the task of setting up an automation. Okay, so now let's go back to our feedback request workflow because the next step is to set it up and to test it. So a few words about testing. We have a good option. 
which is to try it on yourself. You'll probably be honest with yourself and give yourself good feedback about how it worked. You've got a good understanding of your business, but the problem is you may be too close at this point, which is what I call the glaze over effect. You've seen it so many times, you're not going to catch those little things that may be off. So then we have a better option, and that's to try it on a friend. They're probably going to be honest, however, they may not understand your business very well, and so their feedback, you might need to take it with a grain of salt. And then there is the best option. Try it on a customer who is also kind of a friend. They're honest and they understand your business. So this is the best. Go for the win here if you have the ability to do so. Don't skip testing. Okay, so once you have set it up and tested, the last thing to do is to implement. Do it. Put it in place. But then you're not done. You have to review it. You have to go back and look at it. How is it working? Does it make sense? And again, you can go back and ask your customers what they thought, and sometimes their responses will let you know. Also, as your business evolves, you might decide that there are other questions you want to ask instead. So never, automation's not set it and forget it. You do want to revisit and revise um, as your business grows. Okay, so in summary, we've learned how automation will help you run your business more efficiently and professionally, and how it will help you go the extra mile. And as promised, I'm going to challenge you now. Um, it's a simple challenge, but starting with a simple challenge to set up automation is the door that's going to open um, greater things for you as far as taking advantage of the efficiency, being more professional, and going the extra mile. So if you aren't already using a feedback automation, consider this um, permission to hit the easy button and use that workflow that we just completed for the challenge. And the challenge is simple. Brainstorm, create, and implement a simple automation for your business. You can share it on Instagram with the hashtag automation challenge. And if you tag me, I'm going to be out there cheering you on. Now, why the challenge? Because it's so much easier to tackle a big daunting task like this if you have a cheering session. So everyone else who's been watching this hopefully is going to jump on there and follow that tag and you can cheer each other on and give you give pointers. Um, and if you tag me, I'll see it and I'll be there for you too. Okay, so thank you for listening. And um, these are some great credits from the, the gifts that were used in the presentation. Don't want to forget that. Um, what I also wanted to let you know is if you're using Dubsado, which is the tool I use, or if you're thinking about using Dubsado, I'm including a link down below to the course that I took to learn how to set up my automation in Dubsado. Um, so this course isn't to get you to hire me to do automation for you. This is just to share um, how great automation is. If you've got a Squarespace website and you're ready to integrate your automation into your Squarespace website, I'm your girl. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or shoot me a note. Good luck.